Welcome to this video, which will investigate properties of gravity, weight, and mass. Firstly, why is it that we weigh less if we are on the surface of the moon? You might be, you might be aware that our weight would be approximately one-sixth of our weight on the Earth's surface. Also, another interesting fact, if somehow you were on Neptune's surface, the force on your body would be 3G. That means three times the gravitational force that you would experience on the Earth's surface. And this force is the same as the force experienced by an astronaut during a typical launch. The first thing we need to do is get our heads around the definition or the meaning of what gravitational acceleration is. Here is Sir Isaac Newton sitting under an apple tree contemplating why things fall to the ground. He postulated, as well as other people during the centuries, that every object falls to the ground because of what we call gravitational acceleration. And numerically, on Earth, it's been calculated that the value of the gravitational acceleration is about 9.8 metres per second squared. Now, what does that mean? Well, gravitational acceleration means the acceleration experienced by falling objects due to the gravitational force of the Earth. And 9.8 metres per second squared means that as the object falls, each second its speed increases by 9.8 metres per second. Now there is a connection between the gravitational acceleration and what we call the gravitational force. As mentioned, the gravitational force is the force exerted by the Earth's gravity and it is related to the gravitational acceleration in the following way. A very straightforward formula developed by Isaac Newton which basically says that the gravitational force is the mass of the object multiplied by its acceleration, its gravitational acceleration in this case when we are talking about gravity. On Earth, as we said, the acceleration is 9.81 meters per second squared, so our formula becomes F, F for force, equals M times 9.81. And the result is in the units of Newtons, named after Sir Isaac Newton. So if we look at a mass of one kilogram, then the gravitational force experienced is 1 times 9.81, which is 9.81 Newtons. Now, a very important point. Weight changes, but the mass does not change. It is sometimes confusing to distinguish between the two, but the mass of an object does not change anywhere in the universe. In other words, if we were somehow to end up on the surface of the moon, our mass would remain the same, or on any other planet for that matter but our weight would change depending on which planet we are on. The weight is dependent on the gravitational force, which changes for different objects, but our mass does not change. Now in this table, we've got a list of planets including our moon, with a gravitational acceleration given in terms of meters per second squared, and also in terms of g, the g-force, where g is 9.81. So if you look at Earth down towards the bottom there, the gravitational acceleration is 9.8 approximately meters per second squared, or 1g. Other interesting ones there, Jupiter, 2.5g. That means you would experience two and a half times the g-forces that we experience here on Earth, or if you're on the surface of Pluto, 0.1g, very slight force. Now it turns out that our body can quite adequately cope with forces up to 5g, and we experience this quite often. If you are on a roller coaster, or on a merry-go-round even, you experience slight increases in g-forces as you make the turns or when you suddenly go up or down. Now 5g is approximately 5 times 9.8, 49 newtons. Interestingly, once you reach a value of about 50 g, you can pretty well say that you will not survive. As an example of the different effects of gravitational acceleration and force, let's look at a parachutist on Earth to begin with. Typically, 
a parachutist would land on the ground at a speed of approximately 5 metres per second. That allows them to get up safely and walk away without any injury. Now what we can do as an interesting example is to see from what height on other planets, including the moon, you can free fall without using a parachute and still land at 5 metres per second. And to do that, we are going to use one of the formulas from kinematics, which is the study of motion of objects. Here's the formula we're going to use. 2AS equals V squared minus U squared, where A is the gravitational acceleration of our planet or moon. S will be the distance travelled, in this case the distance fallen. V will be the final velocity and U will be the initial velocity. Now we will be beginning from a standing start, that means our initial velocity will be 0 metres per second and our final velocity we want to be 5 metres per second. And what we want from that information is S, the distance travelled or distance fallen. So let's sub in some data. There we are, u equals 0, so our formula becomes 2as equals v squared, and rearranging the formula, 2as equals v squared becomes s equals v squared over 2a. Now v is 5 metres per second, so make that substitution, v squared would be 5 squared, 25, and 25 divided by 2 will be 12.5, so our formula for the distance fallen in terms of the gravitational acceleration is s equals 12.5 over a. So that means for any value of a we know the distance fallen where we know after that that our final velocity will be 5 meters per second. If we plot points for that equation you can see the curve we obtain and I've marked on it the different planets and the moon representing the acceleration so for example, there we are for Earth. So it has a value of 1.3 meters. Now what that means is that without a parachute, if you want to land with a speed of five meters per second on the Earth's surface, you should jump or you should fall from a height of 1.3 meters. Anything more than that, and you'll land at a speed more than five meters per second. Our moon, eight meters. So you are safe to jump from a height of 8 metres, which is quite good, I suppose. 8 metres is a reasonable height. Look at Pluto. You can actually jump from a height of 21 metres and land at 5 metres per second without using a parachute. And 21 metres is pretty much equivalent to the height of a five-storey building. Talk about Superman. And on the other side, we have Neptune which has a height of 0.5 metres or 50 centimetres. Not much at all, is it? Not much of a height. That means even at a height of about 55 centimetres, you would pretty well probably break a leg. Let's look at another interesting example. How high can we jump? The world record for a high jump has been recorded to be 2.45 metres. That, of course, is here on Earth. What do you reckon the equivalent high jump record might be on another planet? Again, we come to our favourite formula of kinematics. 2AS equals V squared minus U squared. Let's make some substitutions for the variables. The gravitational acceleration here on Earth is negative 9.8 metres per second squared. Can you appreciate why there's a negative there? because when we are jumping off the Earth's surface, the gravitational acceleration is in the opposite direction to our direction of motion. So to represent that, to compensate for that, we have a negative. We want our height to be 2.45 meters. So S is 2.45, and our final velocity is zero meters per second, because when we get to the highest point, we are momentarily stationary. What we want to work out from that, of course, is what our initial speed is going to be. And substituting those values in our formula, you can see what we have there. And simplifying, we can now work out the value of u, the initial velocity. The negatives cancel. And u will be the square root of about 48, which comes out to be approximately 6.92 meters per second. So that means here on Earth, the world champion high jumper would have jumped with an initial velocity of 6.92 meters per second 
to reach a maximum height of 2.45 meters. Now let's use that information to work out the maximum height on other planets. And if we do that, this is the summary. Earth, of course, has a gravitational acceleration of 9.8 and the maximum height we said was 2.45 meters. Let's look at the top of that scale. We have Pluto and the Moon and it turns out that the maximum height on Pluto is about 40 meters. That's incredible, isn't it? And on the Moon, about 15 meters. Now you might appreciate why when you see old film footage of an astronaut romping around on the surface of the moon, why it seems like he is going quite a distance away off the surface when he jumps. But incredibly, on Pluto, you can do that up to 40 metres. So what you can do on Earth at about 2.45 metres becomes 40 metres on Pluto's surface. Again... Superman and his giant leap, I guess. I hope this snapshot of gravitational acceleration and gravitational force has inspired you to do some further research and reading and to appreciate the difference between the mass and the weight of objects. Until next time, bye-bye.